Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Black Friday to you. Some great shopping deals going on. And on Mr. Muds, I've got Lee Time here. Yeah, that's right, Lee Time. Gave me a whole bunch of stuff. Remember my past video where I used that uh, inverter to do some MIG welding, grinding, all that? Well, it is back and it is back better now you guys stay tuned i'm going to show you i'm going to build that battery box all over again put it in the milwaukee job box and we're going to take all this stuff here and look what i got there look at this this right here is the star of the show i wanted one of these so bad for so long and i finally got one from them they gave me this and i'm going to be making this video what we're going to be doing is we're gonna make the same box as we did before and we're gonna add this 40 amp DC to DC now this is something that no juice box could do now you know what a juice box is right it's one of those pre things pre-made things that has all the batteries all the stuff in it but what they're lacking and absolutely lacking that I hate well there's a couple things but the first thing they're lacking is a very fast charge rate off of a DC source you could plug in that little cigarette lighter and you'll get yourself about seven amps maybe of charge that's gonna take you forever and that forever will give you a lot of time to drink a lot of beer but we're not gonna be drinking a lot of beer we don't need to because we're gonna have this thing charged up in hours like it's gonna give 40 amps of juice to this whole project the project is wait for it you're gonna love it you're gonna love it we're gonna make this juice box we're gonna connect it up and wire it into my vehicle and actually i'm gonna rewind it back a little bit the original concept of this whole thing is i was gonna give it to a farmer and the farmer was gonna put it in his tractor okay and they're gonna charge it they're gonna be doing stuff in the fields snow clearing all that during the day then at night time they're gonna plug in their block heater. Now it gets cold here in Saskatchewan. It gets like minus 40, right? We have to plug in our vehicles into an outlet to keep the block warm so it start. It will not start when it's that cold. Diesels, forget about it. They always have to be plugged in. It doesn't matter what the temperature, but it absolutely needs to be plugged in. This guy here, this box is gonna be, was, was gonna be put into a tractor, clear snow all day. Then at nighttime, a timer was gonna turn on the block heater. So it'd be parked in the middle of the field and it would come on and keep the vehicle, the tractor warm, then it will start and then charge up the whole day. That was the concept of this video. Unfortunately, the tractor broke down. Oh! Farmer friend said, hey Wes, sorry, we need a new front thing on it and it's not gonna work. And that really kind of ticked me off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my work vehicle over here. I'm gonna build this whole thing. I'm gonna put it in the work vehicle. I drive a lot, so I'm gonna go out on my daily routine. I'm gonna drive out for three hours, charge up the battery, do my work, and if I'm parked at a hotel room, I don't have to rely on plugging in this vehicle, okay? I'll be using this guy, all this stuff built in there. That's gonna keep my vehicle warm, truck warm, all that kind of stuff. Next day, start it up and we go. That is the concept, so stay tuned. I'm gonna build this thing here. I'm not gonna show you all the boring stuff. We'll put it in the box and I'm gonna be out in a couple days and we're gonna test it live. Well, not live, but I'm gonna record it and we're gonna see how she works. So this may be a game changer, you guys, in the construction field, farmers. Hey, we could keep our vehicles warm without plugging them into the household cart. So stay tuned. Okay, so for this DC to DC charger, to operate properly, it needs to be switched on and off. If it's um, if the vehicle's not running and it's charged, it's gonna kill your uh, your battery on your vehicle. So I'm gonna be using this uh, relay that I just uh, snaggled out of an old car, um, it's out of a Nissan actually. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin out the ends here to see which ones are, uh, according to the diagram somewhere on here, which ones are the coil and which ones are the switched parts. So we're gonna use this multimeter here that I picked up from TMU and we're gonna hold down that. We're gonna go into our multimeter function and we're gonna go over to diode check and resistance, good thing. Continuity, check your leads. We got leads, okay, so we're gonna pin this guy out. We're gonna find out which ones are the coil and which ones aren't. So these 
two right here. Try in a crosser. Nothing on this one. Nothing on that. Oh, there we go. All right, you see that on the meter? We got resistance. That is most likely the coil. We'll go to these two. Nothing on those two. Nothing on these two. Nothing on these. That's telling me that these two right here are the coil, and that's where we're gonna hook up our two leads. We're gonna be using this cigarette adapter, which turns on only when the vehicle is running, and that's gonna energize my relay and close the contacts on the DC to DC converter. All right, got everything uh, slammed in the box here. We got our uh, 30,000 watt inverter. Underneath it is our, our battery. 230 amp hour battery. Ends are protected so we don't get any short sight or short circuit. I threw in a house charger in there just for fun in case we need to charge up the battery not using the vehicle. And there's our inverter right there. I got this big old plug here, a big power pole that's going to be running right to the battery using these big honking wires here. We need some good current capabilities because we're going to try running this guy at 40 amps. Uh, there is jumpers on here. You can see right there that allow it to run on 20 amp charge or 40. So I'm not going to leave them jumpered. We're going to go straight off the hop with 40. And then uh, here's our enable. This is where they put a jumper in. Instead of a jumper, we're going to hook up these wires to the other side of our relay right now. So here's what I made back in the house. Here's I pinned out the connectors. These are the other two, the, the switch terminals. And we'll see if this uh, little... These speed connectors are going to fit on there. Oh yeah, perfect man. That's awesome. Simple as that. When the truck is turned on, it's going to power this uh, the accessory outlet. It's going to close the contacts on this relay, which is going to, just like jumpering that inverter charger. So there we go. Next step, put it in the truck, run these big old wires. All right, guys, we got this thing all installed in the truck now and Check this out. I'm directly connected to the battery. I got some uh, a fuse protection here You got to keep a fuse on there if this uh, four gauge wire shorts out somewhere on the metal It's gonna cause a fire so guys be protected man. So we got it here. Let's go whip around to the back here Milwaukee job box you see the power cables kind of running around I got it tucked through the back of the seat here There is a protective shield on it so it doesn't short out Here's where all the magic is. We got our DC to DC hiding at the back there. Inverter plugged in. Here's what we're doing. We got it plugged in already. We're running 119 volts AC at 400 watts. The block heater's plugged in right over here. I got myself a nice little timer. The timer, what it's gonna do is gonna allow, ooh, <laughs> we're gonna allow the, the the block heater to come on at different times during the night so we're not sucking it dry throughout you know we're we are taking 400 watts so how long is that's going to last well it depends how big the battery is right so we got her plugged in right now it's just going to be what whip around here i just got it plugged in right now just into the front of the truck here and i got a cord wrapped around i'm not going to permanently install the the one uh, 20 volt cord just yet uh that's gonna be down the road but right now for testing purposes i'm gonna plug it in at night and test it out so let's have a look here we turn on the truck you see right now i'm gonna turn on the key everything comes on we're gonna start it up Inverter still on. And that is that. We are charging 40 amps right now when the truck's running. Only turns on when the ignitions turn on, do this little uh, accessory thing I made up. So is it gonna work? I don't know. We're gonna have to find out. And uh, tomorrow is gonna be the test when I'm out on the road. I'm gonna be driving for about three and a half hours. We're gonna let this thing charge up. Then we're gonna park it at a hotel overnight and see if, uh, if our block heater keeps up. All right, guys, we'll see you then. All right, this is the day of testing here. I drove out about three hours and the battery, uh, here's the, the results up there. 
that I had it charged before and it quickly charged up the battery in about an hour of driving. Now we're sitting at, uh, what are we at? 13.1 volts on the inverter. And I am gonna plug in the truck now, have a look here. We're, we're cold, it's freezing out here. It's, in, it's sitting at about uh, minus one, zero degrees, and it's getting a little of minus 10-ish. So I'm gonna grab my block heater here, my cord. Uh, it's plugged into a timer, so I'm gonna be running the block heater about uh, two and a half hours tonight. I'm gonna plug it into the truck here. Like so. We're gonna plug this in. We're gonna see what kind of capacity the battery's gonna have. It's gonna keep the block warm. And um, I'm gonna check in with you guys in the morning. So hey, for now, good night. See ya in about 12 hours or so. All right, good morning. Um, this is gonna be the real world test of the lead time DC to DC inverter. We got our truck sitting here.